So you wanna be able to do pull-ups. I mean like real deal, body weight, unassisted pull-ups. This is probably one of the most common requests I get from my female online and in-person coaching clients. I would love to be able to do a real pull-up. So in this video, I'm breaking down pull-ups for beginners. And I'm gonna give you seven tips to get your first pull-up. I'm down here at my private studio, Core Conditioning, here in Surrey, BC, filming this video for you guys today. And I'm gonna do my best to give you all the information you need, even if you are a beginner, to start strengthening and how to start training to getting your first pull-up. I speak from experience because I understand how hard doing a pull-up actually is. Even though I've been seriously strength training for about 16 years straight, other than taking a few breaks after having both of my babies. It's only in the last year or two that I've been able to do unassisted pull-ups and chin-ups for reps because I started training the right way. And that's what I'm gonna break down for you guys in this video today. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what's the difference between a pull-up and a chin-up. Then I'm gonna give you seven tips of things that you can start working on to get stronger in order to work towards doing an unassisted pull-up. And make sure you watch all the way to the end because I'm gonna give you some very common mistakes I see in people training to try and do a pull-up. And of course, just before we dive in, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get a notification when I release a new video every single week, just like this one. My name is Michelle Roots, kinesiologist, personal trainer, nutrition coach, and fitness and fat loss motivation specialist, and mama of two beautiful baby boys. I have over 16 years in the industry helping people decrease body fat, increase lean muscle, to feel like the best versions of themselves, and I created this channel to help you as well. So if you find this video helpful, make sure you give it a like and leave me any questions in the comments below. I'm always happy to help, and I wanna hear about your pull-up journey. So just before we get into this, if you're watching this video already, and you're like, I'll never be able to do a pull-up. There's no way, it's not possible. I just wanna give you a prime example of a woman who comes to my gym and on her 66th birthday, right here in this studio, on this chin-up bar right above my head, she did 10 unassisted bodyweight chin-ups on her 66th birthday. Did she get there overnight? No, but she is constantly showing up here, putting in the work probably for the last six or seven years. I've lost track of time, but it just goes to show if you believe in the process and you're willing to put in the work that anything is possible. So just remember that when you're watching this video that even if you're starting from square one, it is possible. It's just going to take time, just like weight loss, just like building lean muscle, just like body recomposition, all of the things I talk about already on this channel patience and consistency in putting in the work and doing what you need to do. So first things first, let's just get it over with and define what's the difference between a pull-up and a chin-up. The simplest explanation, a pull-up uses what we call a pronated grip. So you're in an overhand grip, pulling yourself up and down. And a chin-up uses what we call a supinated grip. So you're in a reverse grip. So your wrists are facing you, pulling yourself up and down. Both are amazing and both are considered a primary upper body strength training exercise or compound exercise. You're just gonna challenge your muscles in a different way due to the nature of the grip. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be going over pull-ups. However, a lot of the tips I give in this video are still gonna apply for a chin-up as well. I'm gonna give you seven tips that's gonna help you get towards that goal, that's gonna help you build strength in the right muscles and perform the right exercises to help you get stronger in your pull-ups. Number one, you're gonna wanna build your grip strength. If you don't have any grip strength, you need to get stronger grip strength in order to hold the bar. So half of the battle of actually doing pull-ups is being able to hold your body weight with just your grip. And then of course, going for reps, pulling yourself up and down. So we wanna build grip strength and endurance in that grip strength. So how are we gonna do that? There's a few things you can do. Dead hangs. So depending on where you're at in your fitness journey, if you are able to hang from the bar, a dead hang is a great way to decompress your spine, increase your shoulder mobility, and of course, improve your grip strength. So all you're gonna do is hang from the bar as long as you can, keeping your core nice and tight, making sure there's not a huge arch in your lower back, and literally shoot for 30 seconds. If you're a beginner, see how long you can hang initially. If it's five seconds, that's fine. Drop down, do three sets with about a minute or two minute rest in between and continue to hang as long as you can and work towards beating your time until you're able to hang for three sets of 30 seconds. These dead hangs are amazing because they just get you used to holding your own body weight, which is one of the most important things if you're looking to do a pull up, you need to understand how your body feels and you need to train your muscles and your grip to be able to hold your own body weight. I wanna take a minute to tell you about today's video sponsor, 
element. Electrolytes are so important for so many functions in the body, including hormonal balance, fluid balance, and nutrient absorption. Whether it's a workout day or not, I still like taking element electrolyte drink mix to keep my body functioning properly. And I love that it contains no sugar, no artificial sweeteners, and no junk. There's so many different flavors to choose from, including watermelon salt, raspberry salt, citrus salt, whatever your taste buds prefer. Element can help prevent or eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. So if you live an active lifestyle, an electrolyte drink like Element might be just what you're missing. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors. Get yours at drinkelement.com backslash Michelle. The deal is only available through my link. You must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com backslash Michelle. Another great way of improving your grip strength is performing farmer carries. I talk all about farmer carries in this video right here. Best compound lifts for fat loss. So farmer carries is definitely on that list because it will help improve your grip strength and it's a great functional exercise. I won't go over a lot of form in this video, but if you wanna know proper form for farmer carries, I have a video mentioning that here. So again, breaking down all the compound lifts and the proper form. So farmer carries is mentioned in that video. I'll link it in the description below if you wanna go watch that next. And another great way to train your grip strength is heavy deadlifts. So whether you're using a barbell or you're using a dumbbell, performing heavy deadlifts is going to help you improve your grip strength as well. So if you're looking to learn how to do deadlifts, I mentioned it in those compound lift videos I just talked about, but I also have a deadlift specific form video right here where I talk about how to do deadlifts with both kettlebells and barbells. I'll link that in the description below as well. Tip number two, shoulder depressions. So often I see when people are doing pull-ups or chin-ups, they're it's very, very common that it's so hard of an exercise and you're trying to use every muscle you possibly can to pull your body up, whether you're using a band, a machine, or attempting a body weight pull up, they do this. So you're up and you're pulling everything. So shoulders should be away from your ears. So what you wanna do to practice this movement of what we call a shoulder depression, so you're pulling your shoulder blades down and retracting them back so you're squeezing the muscles in your mid back. So you can see here, I'm hanging from the bar and I'm keeping my body straight, keeping my elbows locked straight and I'm just depressing my shoulders up and down. So in that hanging position, I'm getting used to that initial movement. So when you are at the bottom of a pull up and you're about to pull yourself up, you want to do this shoulder depression first to activate your lats and the right muscles versus your upper traps. So if you're all scrunched up, you're going to be using a lot of your upper traps, which aren't the right muscles you wanna be using in a pull-up. So these shoulder depressions can also be done in a lat pull-down machine. As you can see here, I'm using my cable machine. I don't have a lat pull-down machine at my gym, but this works just the same. I've got weight in the handles and I'm just arms locked straight and I'm retracting my shoulders away from my ears. So, so practicing that initial movement of pulling my shoulders away from my ears so that I'm not activating my upper traps when I go to do my pull-up. Again, this is gonna help build the right muscles, but also just create that habit of retracting or depressing your shoulders first before you perform your pull-up. Tip number three, again, getting used to holding your own body weight up, you want to do eccentric training or what we call negatives. So that is where you are climbing up somehow, getting your head above the bar, and you're going to be slowly lowering your body down, slow and controlled. Depending on where you are in your journey, if you're not able to hold your own body weight just yet, you can use a band for these. You can also use a pull-up machine at the gym. The idea behind this eccentric training is getting your muscles used to holding your own body weight and controlling the motion. So try and time your descent, how long it takes you to get down. I usually tell people to aim for a minimum of five seconds. So if I'm up at the top of the bar, I'm five, four, three, two, one to full extension. Or if you're at the beginning of your journey and you find it really hard, do the best you can in trying to slowly control your way down until you have to drop. If you drop, that's fine and you just keep doing it. And of course, just like any other exercise, you're going to get better. And then as you get stronger, you can add holds. So you can practice maybe holding your head above the bar for two seconds and then slowly lowering your body down. You can also try holding when you're at the halfway point for two seconds. You can also start putting weight plates around your waist to apply progressive overload to those muscles and continue to challenge yourself to get strong. Tip number four 
Play around with variations. The main goal in your training program should be to get stronger in your upper back muscles. So you need to do other exercises as well, not just do pull-ups all day, every day. The lat pull-down machine is a great one. TRX inverted rows are great because again, you get used to pulling your own body weight because you simply adjust the difficulty of the exercise simply by just moving your feet. Barbell inverted rows are one of the best exercises for building your upper back strength as well. Again, another great one to build your grip strength. Single arm dumbbell rows. You wanna make sure you're continually to get stronger. You're not just lifting the same weight all the time really think I'm trying to get stronger muscles to be able to pull my body above that bar. Pull up tip number five, core strength. This is the one that is often forgot. In a pull up, your core is working to stabilize your spine and to stop your legs from swinging like this. So in order to keep a proper form in your pull up, you need to have core strength. So make sure you're adding exercises in that strengthen your core, such as a front plank like you're seeing here or a hollow hold like you see here, which is really great for building your deep core strength and stabilization in order to be able to do pull ups. And once you start getting better at your dead hangs, you can start challenging yourself by holding your body in a shoulder depressed hollow hold position while you're in your dead hand. That is really gonna trigger all your core muscles, your upper back muscles, and just work on your stabilization. And again, just like in the dead hangs, you just challenge yourself for how long you can hold this position. Remember, do not neglect your core strength. And I'm not talking like just do sit-ups all day. I'm not talking your abdominals. I'm talking your deep, deep core stabilizers, like your transverse abdominis. If you wanna know more about how to start stabilizing your deep, deep core, especially if you've had babies, ladies, transverse abdominis, I talk all about it in this video here. So if you don't really know how to activate your core muscles, you might wanna check that out first before you start doing these planks and hollow holds and dead hangs. I'll link that video in the description below as well. Tip number six, make your upper back exercises a priority. So if your goal is to do a pull up, you wanna make sure if you're walking into the gym to do whether it's a full body workout or an upper body strength workout, make sure these upper back focused exercises are at the top of your workout. So after your warm up, after your dynamics and you're ready to start your workout, if your goal is pull ups, so your bent over rows, your dumbbell rows, your lat pull downs, your assisted pull ups or chin ups, all of these exercises, all of these should be at the beginning of your workout when your muscles are at their strongest so you can really push in order to apply progressive overload and lift heavier in these specific exercises exercises in turn to build upper back strength in turn to get stronger at your pull-ups and tip number seven probably the most important do not give up believe in yourself I'm just keeping it real is that it's gonna feel impossible I promise you that there was times I was training clients in here and my clients were knocking out pull-ups like it's nothing and I was like why can't I do this as the coach I should be able to do this. And then one day it clicked and something clicked and I can't even explain it, but I just kept trying. I didn't give up. I was like, I don't care. Yeah, I've had two babies. I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna be 40 in a month. I don't care. Nothing is gonna stop me and I am going to do a pull up if it kills me. And sure enough, here I am. So I just wanna remind you, whether you're already on a journey to your first pull-up and it seems impossible, just please don't give up. You have to keep trying. Pull-ups especially are one of these exercises that even if you take two weeks off and you haven't done them, you're gonna come back, they're gonna be hard again. So it's something that you have to keep working at and you have to believe yourself that you can do it. Believe in yourself and enjoy the journey to get there. Hopefully one of these tips was helpful and it's something that you're not already doing and you can add into your regimen. And last but not least, I wanna talk about common mistakes I see. So one of the major common mistakes I see is people relying only on bands to do their pull-ups. Band assisted pull-ups are a great way to learn to lift your body above the bar and to get your muscles firing. But the problem is you're not really learning how to lift your own body weight. Because when you have your foot in the band, it's stretching all the way down and the band is actually helping you at the part that is the hardest part of the pull-up. The hardest part is here and that is when it's the band is at its most stretch point. So it's helping you at the, the hardest point of the pull-up. They are a great tool to use to start getting the form down, start building your core strength, start learning that shoulder depression, building up your grip strength. They're great, but eventually you're gonna have to move on to something else. 
Of course, you can go from a thicker band to a thinner band, but eventually you wanna start playing around with other techniques to help challenge your muscles in a different way. So if you're someone who's been doing band assisted pull-ups for a really long time and you find, I'm not really getting anywhere with them, I'm not getting stronger, even if it means you're doing two negative pull-ups first without any band, and then you're popping the band around your foot to finish off your set. That's totally fine, and that's how you're gonna get stronger, and then eventually it goes to three unassisted eccentric pull-ups, and then you pop the band on. But just make sure you're doing other things and not just relying on that band to do your pull-ups. Common mistake number two, they're not doing them often enough. So you don't necessarily need to be doing pull-ups every single day to get better at them, but you do need to do them, I would say at least two or three times a week, you need to be doing some form of a pull-up or a grip strength type exercise in order to get strong. This type of exercise is something that takes practice and takes repetition, and just as I said earlier, even if you don't do them for three weeks and you come back to it, it's gonna feel hard again. It's just unfortunately one of those exercises that is always gonna be hard, but it just gets a little bit easier, but it takes consistency. And then the very last common mistake I see is people aren't lifting heavy enough in their upper back exercises, so they're not applying progressive overload. You wanna know what progressive overload is, and I keep saying it and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I've got a video all about it. What is progressive overload and how to apply it? I'll link that in the description below as well if you wanna learn why and how you can be applying progressive overload to your upper back exercises in order to get stronger to pull your head up over the bar. So there you go guys. That is the best tips I can give you if you're a beginner or you're even in the middle of your journey and you're still trying and you can't seem to get an unassisted pull up. I hope these tips were helpful. I know all of the things I mentioned in this video helped me get to where I am today where I can do unassisted chin ups with 20 pounds around my waist and it feels so good, but I didn't get here overnight. And I really do think that believing in yourself is half the problem. You have to believe that you can do it. Don't think it's gonna happen overnight. Put in the work and it will happen. But keep me posted in the comments below. I wanna know what was your pull-up journey like if you've already been able to do a pull-up or where are you at in your journey? Let's cheer each other on. I love hearing your feedback in my video comments and cheering you guys on. But if you're looking to start a strength training journey, I've got an eight week beginner friendly strength training program for the gym or at home with just dumbbells. There's a four day split option and a three day split option based on your availability and what equipment you have access to. But it's a great starter point to start building strength, and if you're in a body recomposition, to build some lean muscle and decrease body fat. And I'll put more information about that eight week program in the description below. But if you want more personalization in your workouts and your nutrition, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find out more about working with me in my online fitness and nutrition coaching. And of course, you guys, thank you so much for watching today. I really hope this video was helpful. And as usual, I will see you next week.